So you're finally ready to transform your home with a Persian or Oriental rug and you've been spending endless hours online looking at all the different options and many different websites and maybe even went to your local store to see what the rugs look and feel like. And along the way you learned about names maybe such as Tabriz or Kashan and some different types of designs like floral design, geometric design and Maybe also someone told you about knots per square inch and how important it is to pay attention to the KPSI of every rug. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, wow, this is, this is pretty overwhelming. There's a lot of information to process. There's a lot of options to choose from. If only there was a guide, if only there was a way, someone that's gonna walk me through this step by step and give me some sort of structure to go about this process. Well, in this video, we're going to do just that. In this video, we're going to cover how to purchase your next Persian or Oriental rug. I'm Sean with Catalina Rug, and I'm going to try to be your guide throughout this rug purchasing journey. So whether it's your first time purchasing a Persian or Oriental rug, or you've been already filling up your home with several rugs, the objective of this video is to give you some sort of blueprints, some sort of structure that will make this process a little bit easier. And on a personal side, I really believe that Persian and Oriental rugs are works of art. So just like you're picking out art, you could do it as freely and structureless as you want. However, the point of this video is to help you with some structure and at least give you some ideas for different criteria that you can use to make this process easier. So with that, let's get into it. So there are a couple of big picture ideas that I like to go over with you before we dive into the specific criteria when it comes to purchasing a Persian Oriental rug. The first idea is about our mindset, which is I invite you to have the mindset that you're purchasing a piece of art, an art that's gonna go on your floor. Because of course, these rugs, they provide the utility of sitting in the floor as something we could walk on, but really they are art. And so just like with any art, things that are not mass produced, we can't really have them to meet exactly our specifications. So I invite you to be a little bit flexible when it comes to getting the size that you want or maybe something about the design or colors and uh, think of it as purchasing art. And this way I think it'll make the entire process a lot easier and also it'll let you find the rug that you can really fall in love with. And so this is the first uh, idea is bring the mindset up of art and mindset of flexibility. So the next big idea that I wanted to go over before we dive into the specific criteria when it comes to purchasing your next rug is about budgeting and price ranges. So definitely I invite you to have a budget in mind and have a price range in mind when it comes to your next purchase. And also I invite you to again think of this as purchasing art. Think of this as you're making an investment that's going to last for generations, of course, you, if you take good care of it. And just like with any other art, the more high-end and the more rare it is, the more the value is going to go up in time. And definitely when it comes to Persian rugs, they will at least hold their value and usually they go up in value over time. Now, if you want to learn more about uh, how Persian rugs are priced and get a little bit deeper into this topic, we made a dedicated video going over this topic so definitely check that out we'll provide the link for you below all right so now that we got the couple of big picture ideas out of the way let's dive into the specific criteria and how we're going to do this is first we're going to go over the primary criteria and then we'll look into the secondary criteria now what i invite you to do is look into the primary criteria first and allow those criteria to narrow down your options when it comes to choosing your Persian or Oriental rug and only go into the secondary criteria once you've figured out your primary criteria and you narrow down your options. Some of the stuff may feel a little bit counterintuitive, but over the years helping thousands of clients, we learned that this structure works pretty well. So with that, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing when it comes to the primary criteria I like to go over is the type of room that your rug is gonna go in. So whether the rug is going in your living room or dining room or bedroom, this decision is gonna have a lot of impact on many of the other decisions. So 
For example, if the rug is going in your living room, then you have to consider, are you going to have the rug go underneath your couch or are you going to have it go up to the edge of the couch? Or if the rug is going in your dining room, then you have to of course consider the size of the rug to be big enough for the dining room. And also you have to start really paying attention to the border colors because that's going to be shown the most. Or let's say when it comes to your bedroom, well, you have to decide, do you want to choose one large rug or do you want to go with several runner rugs? So there's a lot of decisions that are going to come from this criteria. So it's the first thing that you have to really consider. And we have a lot of videos covering each type of room. So I invite you to take a look at those videos. We'll provide the links and also you could look up any type of room and you could read more about it and watch videos to learn about the design tips we have for each type of room. All right, so the next primary criteria we're going to go over is the dimensions of the rug. So this is definitely one of those variables that we need to be a bit flexible on and I'm going to give you several tips that should help with this. So the first thing to note is that uh, Persian and Oriental rugs typically they're going to come with the width first and then the length. So for example you're going to hear 9 by 12 that means the rug is going to be 9 feet wide and 12 feet long. Now these rugs are hand knotted and they're typically made in the metric system and so you can expect it to be a few inches shorter or a few inches longer on both sides. So for example, uh, if you're looking for roughly a 9 by 12 rug, the rug might be 9 feet 3 inches by 12 feet uh, 5 inches. So definitely keep that in mind that it's going to be usually a little bit under or a little bit over uh, those, those uh, dimensions. And another thing to keep in mind is that the fringes of the rug are usually not used uh, in the length of the rug. So for example, if a rug says uh, 9 feet long, then usually you have to add about 1 or 2 inches to it because the fringes on both ends are going to add about half an inch to an inch at least to the length of the rug on both ends. So that adds to be about 2 to 3 inches. So keep that in mind as well. And uh, finally, what I invite you to do to make this process a lot easier is set absolute limits. So when you're looking at, for example, your living room, you could set down a tape measure and actually use blue tape uh, to mark the space and find out what is the absolute longest the rug can be and what is the absolute shortest it can be. And this will really make the whole process a lot easier when you know your absolutes that you cannot break. All right, so the next primary criteria we're gonna look at is the rug's pile height. So here at Catalina, we break down the pile height into low pile, low medium pile and medium pile and then uh, high pile. So this is the rug's pile thickness. Now, when it comes to the pile height, some people just have preference for thicker rugs or medium thickness rugs, and some people like the, the thinner piles. Now, this is also a utility uh, idea, which is if you have a rug that is gonna be in a high traffic area, you're expecting a lot of foot traffic in this part of your home, then you might wanna look into a higher pile height rug that can handle high traffic easier. So for example, like a Hariz or a Bijar or a, a Mashad rug, those all have the higher pile heights. Now, when it comes to thinner pile height, like for example, if you're dealing with a situation where you have doors opening over the rug and you can't really make adjustments to the door, so you're worried about the clearance issues, then you want to look at the lower to lower medium pile height rugs, which would be something like Baluchi or Torkaman or Kazakh and several others. So this is definitely one of those criteria that's going to dictate several other things. So definitely important to look at. And if this is important for you, then I invite you to check out our video about rug pile heights and the different types of rugs that you can look at based off of different pile heights. All right, so the next primary criteria we're going to go over are colors. So this is again another criteria that we need to be kind of flexible on. And what you'll notice with Persian and Oriental rugs is that they come with a lot of different colors. And the way that the colors are usually provided is that first there's the field color, which is the main background color of the rug. Typically, if the rug has a medallion, this will be the field of the rug that surrounds the medallion. Or if you're dealing with this all over pattern, then it's going to be that background field color. And then you're going to have the border color, which is usually different from the field color. And then you'll have the highlight colors, which there's going to be many different highlight colors being used throughout the rug. 
So definitely what's really important here is where the rug is gonna be used in. So going back to our dining room example, if the rug is gonna sit underneath a dining table, then typically it's gonna be mostly the border that's gonna show. And so you wanna pay more attention to the border colors. And uh, another example would be the living room. So if the rug is sitting in the living room, maybe the couches are covering most of the border and so the field color is more important to pay attention to. So definitely what you wanna to try to do is match a couple of accent colors to your rug and that way it's gonna be more complementary to your room and also you don't want the colors to match too much to the room because then it's gonna feel like um, too bland and characterless. So what we recommend is if you can't find a couple of accent colors in the room that you can match the rug but you found a rug that you really love then consider changing some of the other furniture or changing some of the other decor so you can make the rug work with the colors in the room. So those are our recommendations when it comes to the colors. All right, so the next primary criteria we're gonna look at is the brightness or darkness of the rug, which is really related to the colors. So this could be, of course, a preference, and also there's the utility aspect of it. So depending on the type of room that the rug is gonna go into, you might wanna get a darker rug or a brighter rug. So as an example, if you're looking at getting a rug for your kitchen or for your dining room, then we recommend looking into the darker rugs, so that way if there's any stains or spills on the rug, it'll help hide them easier. Now, when it comes to the brightness or darkness, this is gonna really dictate what type of Persian or oriental rug that you can get, because certain types of Persian or oriental rugs tend to be brighter and other ones are gonna be darker. So this definitely dictates that criteria. So if you wanna learn more about what types of rugs are gonna be dark, which ones are gonna be brighter, we've made a more in-depth video covering this topic and we're gonna have a lot of the recommendations for the types of rugs that you can look into. And also here at Catalina Rug, we're in the process of tagging all of our products with the different brightness and darkness attributes so that way it'll make, you, make it easier for you to filter down these options. All right, so the final primary criteria we're gonna go over when it comes to Persian and oriental rugs is gonna be the design. So the nice thing about Persian oriental rugs is that there's a lot of different options when it comes to design and really depends on your preference and whatever that is more complementary to your home. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna give you an overview of the type of options that you have so you have a better idea of what you can work with. So there's gonna be three main popular designs, which is floral design, then geometric design, and harati design, also known as fish design. Now, each type of these designs are gonna come in either medallion or all over patterns. So for example, you're gonna get a floral medallion rug, which is gonna have a more curvilinear floral patterns, and then it's gonna have a medallion centerpiece in the middle and sometimes some corner pieces. You can also have a floral all over rug, which is floral, again, the, the, the motives and everything, it's gonna look uh, curvilinear and there's gonna be a lot of flowers in the rug, but the pattern is gonna be all over pattern, which means it doesn't have a center medallion, it's just an equal pattern distributed throughout the field of the rug. Same thing when it comes to the geometric design, you're gonna have both medallion and all over, and same thing with the Harati design. Another thing to note is that there's other designs outside of these three popular designs. So for example, there's this garden design or garden panel design that Bakhtiori rugs are famous for. There's also pictorial design uh, that a lot of Tabriz rugs make, pictorial designs, as well as vase design, prayer design, hunting design, and many other type of designs outside of these three popular designs. So you have a lot of options to choose from. And so if you wanna learn more about the type of designs that are available and the type of Persian and oriental rugs you could find with each of these designs, and we made several videos covering this topic, so definitely look up those videos to learn more about Persian rug and oriental rug designs. All right, so that covers our primary criteria, which I really invite you to use to narrow down your options first before you move on to the secondary criteria, which we're gonna go over shortly. So for the secondary criteria, you're gonna notice that a lot of the decisions that we made earlier are gonna be dictating these secondary criteria, such as the type of rug, 
the knot density, the material of the rug, and the age. So let's get into those now. All right, so now let's go over the secondary criteria. I'm gonna start off with the type of rug. So by this point, if you've already gone through all of the primary criteria, you should have a more narrowed down options for the types of rugs to choose from. And I wanted to make a few recommendations around this criteria. So the first thing is if you have high interest or high affinity for certain type of rug, then definitely look into those rugs. So for example, if you really know that you like Tabriz rugs or Hariz rugs, then just focus on those. And also if you um, have certain distinct characteristics you notice that are offered in certain type of rug then you can start focusing on those because each type of Persian oriental rug has its own distinct characteristics. And uh, something else to note is that the more popular the brand name is of course the more expensive usually the rug is going to be. So for example names such as Tabriz or Kashan or Mashad usually will come at higher prices because of the higher demand. Now, something to note about Persian rugs is that we can break them down into three different categories, which is the city-made Persian rugs or traditional Persian rugs. There's also village Persian rugs and tribal Persian rugs. If you wanna learn more about each type of these rugs, then we have videos about each one and we provide a lot of different recommendations and the types of rugs that are offered in each kind. And when it comes to specific types of Persian rugs and oriental rugs, we have videos on those as well. So definitely you can learn a lot about this topic and look into each type of rug that you like, watch videos and learn more about them. All right, so let's go over the next secondary criteria, which is not density. So I personally think this is one of those criteria that's just really overemphasized. And I think it really depends on the type of design of the rug and that's gonna really dictate the knot density. So if you're dealing with a rug that has really intricate designs and a lot of details, then yes, I would say that higher knot density would be better. However, if you're dealing with a rug that doesn't have that much detail or it has a geometric design or a more tribal look and feel to it, then a high knot density doesn't really matter. That's not an important criteria to focus on. I would say that looking at the other primary criteria is much more important before you look at the knot density. So definitely it is one of the attributes that determines the price of the rug and it is important, but usually there's other primary criteria that are more important before looking into knot density. All right, so the next secondary criteria we're gonna go over is gonna be the material of the rug. So when it comes to Persian or into rugs, typically we break down the material into what the foundation is made of and what the pile of the rug is made of. So usually the foundation of a lot of rugs is made with cotton when it comes to Persian or oriental rugs, and their pile is usually made with wool. Now you could get, for example, tribal rugs that are gonna have wool foundation, and you're gonna get uh, certain traditional or city-made Persian rugs that have a lot of details and intricacies and high knot density that are gonna have silk foundation, and sometimes they have silk in their pile as well as 100% silk piles, so that's also possible. Now when it comes to the material, this is a secondary criteria because a lot of this is determined by what kind of design that you choose or what kind of pile height or what type of rug that you choose. So a lot of those choices made earlier are gonna determine what kind of material the rug is gonna have. Now if you wanna learn more about the different materials that are in Persian or Oriental rugs and what kind of options you have around those materials, then we made videos covering this topic. All right, so the final secondary criteria we're gonna go over is the age of the rug. And the main point here is that as long as the rug is in excellent condition, then the age is not that important. And a few things to note is that one, when it comes to brand new Persian rugs, usually the prices are gonna be higher and that's because the cost of labor and material goes up every year. And then when it comes to vintage or antique Persian rugs, then if they are in excellent condition, then usually they're gonna be more expensive because they're gonna be more rare. All right, so this concludes our video on how to purchase your next Persian and Oriental rug. I really hope that you find this structure or blueprint helpful. And again, you don't have to follow this exactly, but hopefully it serves as inspirations for some of the different criteria that you can use to narrow down your options and pick out the Persian 
perfect rug. And if you want to learn more about any of the topics that we discussed in this video, then you can head over to our site, CatalinaRug.com, where we have more in-depth videos covering each topic, and we have a lot of different options for you to look at. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, then I invite you to like and subscribe and comment below, and I will see you in the next video.